Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and we're back with Kerbal Space Program. Now, the last mission we did was one of the last basic missions that we're going to have to do. In my opinion, now that we're able to... Oh, our team scientists work hard to crunch data received from missions experiments. Here, all research technologies can be viewed and uh, new ones discovered. Um, do I have that much money? I don't have that much money. Did I accidentally click on it? I must have accidentally clicked on it. Okay. Uh, enter. How do I get that screen to even pop? Oh, I right click. Okay. I was curious of why that happened. <laughs> All right. So if you right click on buildings, it allows you to upgrade them and things. So. Oh, so that's why we, we have a max parts uh, cap unless we upgrade. So max parts supported is 30. If we upgrade it, we get 255. We get basic action groups available. Okay, so it looks like that is something that is on the dock that we need to do. What, what else can we upgrade? So orbits visible on map and patched conics visible on map. I'm not sure exactly what that is. All right, what about this? So max vessel size, max vessel weight. That's what we ran into last time. It looks like we dramatically increase that if we upgrade. Now, unfortunately, we don't have that much money beyond this, and I, I'm not really sure that's something I want to do just yet, but that's something that's probably a high priority. Okay, uh, we have mission control, max contract 2, max contract 7. Uh, that would have been handy earlier uh, when we had that one mission we couldn't select. And we have a tracking station upgrade required for flight planning. Okay. That's interesting. I already checked out the mission control. We don't have any additional missions beyond what we already have. So let's uh, come back. Uh, let's see here. Administrative building. So we have five active Kerbals. I think we might already have four. And Kerbals can only disembark on Kerbin. And then we have Kerbals can perform EVAs, and Kerbal, Kerbals on EVA can place flags. And we have 12 active Kerbals if we upgrade, so that's a nice upgrade. Then Administrative Buildings, Mac Active Strategies. Oh, I'm not really concerned about the strategies yet. That's something I haven't really gone over a lot. But essentially you trade one attribute for another benefit of an attribute essentially it's kind of like a balancing act uh, but let's go ahead and get into our mission that was an interesting accident that i found all that stuff out so now we have a choice of a different cockpit you know what i'm thinking we probably should do an upgrade because looking at cost of things i don't think we need you know like 20k or something to finish this and we're going to have like roughly 15-ish K left over. Uh, so I, it may be worth upgrading um, the uh, launch pad so that we can have a heavier craft. Because that's the best way we can guarantee getting out of the atmosphere is having a bigger craft. So let's go ahead and exit. And why don't we upgrade our launch pad? Because that sounds like a really good idea. So uh, if we go here, we had that maximum size and weight. Now we can dramatically increase that with this 75 thousand whatever that currency is upgrade so let's go ahead and do that we only have uh roughly sixteen thousand to work with but i think we can uh work things uh with that kind of money so this is a lot more expensive uh let's see what the benefits are though so we have uh we can we can Well, there's a lot more involved with this than uh, there used to be. All right, so we have some monopropellant and some electric charge. It looks like we can uh, science experiments. I'm not sure what collectible data means uh, because we are still able to do science experiments. And it looks like there's not really a difference between the two. Now, we do have the pitch torque goes up with this one. And also the electrical charge required goes up. Um, we also have a difference in the monitor propellant. This one has more. And it's a lot cheaper, so I think we're going to stay with this one. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to do is our fuel tanks. 
Uh, now, because we unlocked the structural components, we can now do staging, which is going to help us a lot. Um, so we're going to try and do a more traditional kind of setup uh, with a stage. There we go. We get a stage separating our capsule. And I also want to make sure I grab a parachute. There we go. Um, so now we only have to worry about one parachute. That saves us a little bit of money, but it also, uh, you know, it should save us on weight and things like that as well. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, fuel tank. It'd also be nice to have the, uh, the fuel lines at some point. So I think I'm going to do just three tanks and we're going to do our normal engine. And then we're going to do another stack decoupler. And we're going to do a solid fuel booster. And I'm really curious uh, how this is going to do, just as it is, honestly. Uh, but I want to make sure I also am doing the, the science objectives as well. So I'm going to do something like this. Now there's a possibility this will overheat if I do this. Um, and I do have to be concerned about that. And if it overheats, what I can do is I can just get rid of the disconnect it. Now there's a danger though if it's still going it will flip my craft or collide with my craft and kill uh, my poor poor uh, Kerbal in there. <laughs> Alright so there's our stack decoupler there. Then we have our uh, thrust here. We're going to want to separate the uh, parachute and the decoupler. So it looks like we have a pretty basic rocket. And this is what you know this is a, what I consider a true you know, rocket. What we were doing before was very limited in scope. Okay, so the other thing we want to do is we want to get ourselves some science stuff. So, first thing, we don't need four antenna. We're just going to need one. I want to grab it and put it put it right there on our little hatch. And then I'm going to also grab one of these mystery goos in case we actually make it out into space. Uh, essentially with the mystery goo, uh, with the description, you want to get it, you want to get it uh, into space uh, for it to give you the most science. I think you can still get science out of it in the atmosphere, uh, but that's something that we can kind of wait and see. If we don't get into space... We can just launch, we can just fire it off and get the science from it in an atmosphere. If we get into space, we'll use it there. But also because of this antenna, we'll be able to uh, acquire crew reports in the atmosphere as we're going through it and transmit them as our parachute is kind of letting us down. So uh, at least that's the idea in principle. But, you know, this is one of those things. You kind of have to do it and just find out how it works. So uh, this is going to be our first one we're going we're gonna to actually name. And we're going to name it really something super original. The X1. X for experimental. One for being the first one. All right. So why don't we go ahead and launch this. Now, ideally, we're going to get a lot of science out of this. Ideally, we get out of the atmosphere. But not all of those things may happen. We're just going to have to find out. So I'm going to go ahead and thrust up. And I haven't been using SAS, and that's mostly because I forgot the button, but I looked it up, and now I'm going to enable that. Now that's going to burn through our electrical charge as it gets used, but it will keep our craft a little bit more stable, and we definitely want that. So let's go ahead and launch. This is going to be our solid boosters first. And we're going to have to watch for overheating. If it overheats... We may have to eject it. I don't think it's going to be an issue, though. Okay, so we have our first separation coming soon. There we go, and launch. Uh oh, I had to I had to ditch that because it wasn't looking good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a crew report once we get it into higher space. I mean higher atmosphere. Uh, looks like about right. 
Let's do that. Okay, uh, that is apparently not worth anything. That's unfortunate. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and observe the mystery goo. Now, it's going to be worth uh, seven science, and might as well fire off our parachute while we're here. Twirl around. We're going to get seven science if we land with it. Now, if we transmitted it, we'd only get two science, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Fortunately, this uh, mission was a failure, kind of, in that we probably lost most of our rocket uh, elements. Uh, there's probably, I could reuse that rocket and do that mission again. Uh, I'm just gonna have to, well, keep the data. I'm just going to have to be a little bit, maybe more cautious with the thrust uh, off the get-go, because uh, we had, oh, that was a big explosion. <laughs> so there we have our boosters uh, hitting the ground, and why don't we go ahead and speed it up now. We're about to have our parachute open. So luckily, uh, our uh, Kerbal did not die. Unfortunately, I didn't set what the crew member was, so... It was Jebediah automatically. He's essentially your default. Let's speed things up so we get down to the ground a little bit quicker. So that was an unfortunate mission, but at the same time, we're going to get science out of it. Uh, we just didn't get to see its true potential, uh, unfortunately. But we could just go ahead and do that mission again uh, and probably do fine with it. So let's go ahead and escape. I'm going to go to Space Center. Now, if I hit reverse flight, it would do everything over again. But I want to be, you know, kind of authentic here. If we make a mistake, we kind of have to live with it. And it shows right there where our craft is, the X-1. So why don't we go ahead and pick it up. Oop, that's not what I want to do. And I have a feeling we're not going to get very much of our, our parts back, uh, as far as that is goes. But we are going to get a bunch of science. So we got seven science. For that mission, for a total of eight, we're still seven off of where we need to be. Now, ideally, you want to use the uh, the goo in space, as I said, because that's where you really want to see it. And it looks like we got 2,000 let back, so unfortunately, it looks like we lost money on that mission. And Jebediah Kerman did not get any experience, unfortunately. I guess he didn't really do anything new, so he didn't get any experience. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that launch again, but this time we're going to be a little bit more careful with our launch. Possibly this thing's a little top heavy and that's why that happened. You can actually see uh, your center of mass. Probably what happened was once we launched these off it really unbalanced the weight of the craft and then we just did full thrust after that and it, it kind of went out of control. Um, so it might work just fine as it is. We could also do something you know, a little bit different with it as well. But I want to see what the potential of the X-1 is without it blowing up. So let's go ahead and grab a crew member, and we'll grab Bob, because he has not been up in space, uh, well, the air yet. Okay, so hopefully this time we can get maybe some better science out of this thing, because we'll get a little bit higher. So uh, now that we have everything set up, why don't we do our launch again? So this time, I'm not going to do full thrust right out the get-go. I'm going to do maybe quarter thrust uh, or third thrust because they give us kind of me a rough a guideline there. And we'll see how that do goes. I'm also probably going to wait a little while before I hit the thrust. Uh, okay, so now it's not letting me use SAS, uh, whereas before it did. That's interesting. Maybe that was just a bug. Maybe I wasn't supposed to be able to use SAS. Maybe that's why the mission went wrong. Okay, in any case, let's go ahead and try this one more time. So we get our initial go. I have a feeling we're going to need a lot more than this to get into, into the uh, space, out of the atmosphere. Okay, we're about to lose our... Okay, I'm going to let it... Ooh, see, that's... That's the problem. It kind of bobbled there after that, but I, I thrusted right away, and when that bobble happened, the thrust took the bobble. And now we should be okay, now that I've corrected for it. So that was my bad, essentially. Try and 
correct the uh, course here. Because we don't have SAS, I'm going to have to kind of do this manually. Let's see if we can get a crew report now. It's worth anything. It doesn't look like it. Oh! Oh! Let's turn off a thrust. Nope, that's the wrong way. Okay. While I was messing around with the... Uh, crew report, we lost our... Okay, let's... Fire her back up. It's a lot trickier when you don't have SES keeping the thing on course. But unfortunately, we haven't unlocked that yet. We still have quite a bit of fuel, and it looks like we might get into the upper atmosphere, which probably will give us a crew report. Alright, some of this is my bad, essentially, that this didn't happen. Oop, 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 no! Okay, so we're definitely up there. Let's see if we can get a crew report now. Hello? Yes, we can. So we'll keep that, because I don't think we're going to do much better than that. And let's uh, try and see if we can get out of here. I don't think we can. Fortunately, I lost control of the craft there. We're still going up. Go that way, and then I want to take it this way. Okay. We're starting to fall, though. Okay, now I want to go this way. Okay, now let's fire down a little bit. Okay. Alright, so I apologize for that kind of miss there, and I don't think we're going to get much higher into the atmosphere, unfortunately. And that was my bad. I just fumbled the controls there. But, you know, it's a learning experience for me as we go. Now, let's see if we burn up. Because <laughs> I was kind of curious about that without a heat shield. Now, I don't know if that really counted as being out of the atmosphere so that it would require it. I'm, I'm trying to stabilize the craft, but I'm actually making it worse here. All right. Part of the problem is I, I kind of forget, uh, and why I bobbled the controls there, I forget that uh, down, down is up and up is down. Kind of like your, your flight stick controls with the keyboard. And because I forgot that, let's go ahead and jettison our thingy. See, the thing I'm curious about is, does this count as a heat shield, this bottom surface here? Because if it does, then we don't need one. Okay, so we're entering the atmosphere. Let's speed this up. We got a bit of science out of that, but not very much. And as I said, that's really my bad. So we get down to about 5,000 meters. I'm going to go ahead and deploy the chute, slow us down a little bit, give us a little bit of drag. And there's our, our boosters slamming into the ground. Fortunately, I didn't catch that in time, but that's the bit there. So as you can see, we're kind of not getting the same kind of money reserves. Although, we did get a new height kind of unlock milestone, which should give us a little bit of currency. All right, so let's speed her back up. Probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit more ambitious with the X2. I think this is pretty much uh, the X1 running its course. To me, it's clear that uh, we're not going to uh, we're not going to get uh, much better. I, I think we might barely be able to get out of the atmosphere with this rocket, but I just want to guarantee it. So the next rocket I build, I think, has a much higher chance of getting out of there. In any case, I hope you guys have enjoyed that this video. We're going to go ahead and. Uh, get back to our space center, see what our results are, and then call an end to this video. So, and unfortunately, the uh, the uh, X1 didn't uh, achieve what we uh, thought it would, but it tried its it tried its best. We did get some science out of it. We got roughly eleven and a half science out of it, so that's not too bad. Uh, we also 
uh, gained a number of funds, both from, well, recovered parts is not really gaining funds, that's just getting them back. Uh, but we gained some from getting a that milestone, and Bob Kerman got a little bit of experience. So that's all good things. In any case, as I said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.